Hi, today we're going to take a look at the PCBs which had the surface mount assembly performed at JLC PCB. So here we've got the package and we've got all of the PCBs inside here. So let's just uh, open this up. Right, so here we have the PCBs and they look really nice actually. Um, you'll notice that there are a few components that weren't fitted. So we've got an inductor here, a voltage regulator, a couple of LEDs and some switches and the main sensor. Some of these weren't assembled because they weren't available as parts that could be placed on the board through JLC PCBs assembly service. And then the LEDs and the voltage regulator weren't placed because at the time of placing this order, there was a bug which meant that you could only place 10 extended parts on the board regardless if any of those parts were the same device. Whereas now it's been configured so that as long as you haven't got more than 10 different line items, you can place as many of those as you like on the board as it should have been. So that's now been fixed. Let's take a little close up of the board with the microscope. Right, so here we have the PCB up close. And you can see here we've got really nice solder joints on this SSOP package. So uh, good alignment and a reasonable amount of uh, solder paste on each of those. We've got some of the 0805 components here. Got a couple of SOT 23s a little bit further up and then a SOIC package. But as you can see, everything looks absolutely fine. And also the detail on the PCB itself is pretty good. So no uh, over etching on the traces. It all looks absolutely spot on. So the next thing that we need to do is assemble the remaining parts. So we've got a few surface mount parts to assemble. So this is the humidity and temperature sensor. We've got a couple of tactile switches and the LED. And then we'll solder on the inductor and also the 3.3 volt regulator. We've also got a few through hole parts to assemble onto the board. So uh, we've got the terminal block and we've also got the in circuit serial programming header. And then on the other side of the board is where the display is going to go. So there's two six digit seven segment displays which are going to display the temperature and the humidity. And then also that data is going to be able to be sent out on the communications port using RS-485. Right, so I thought we'd just have a little look at the schematic before we go any further. So what we've got at the heart of this is a little PIC24F 16-bit microcontroller. We've got the seven segment displays which are driven by a TM1640 driver chip. So this is very similar to the one that I used on Camden's IKEA kitchen but it's designed to drive up to 16 digits of seven segment displays. So we've got 12 digits here and this is really nice because it sort of offloads all of the multiplexing and everything to this chip as well as current control so you can change the brightness of those displays uh, using some of the registers in this chip. What we've got here is a little voltage level translation using some transistors in a cascode arrangement. So here you can see we've got our 5 volt supply because this device needs a 5 volt logic. And when this input here is driven by the microcontroller at 3.3 volts, effectively this transistor turns off and the input is driven high by this pull up. Then when you drive this pin low with the microcontroller, you start to get your base current through here and then that pulls the input uh, on this device down to ground. So you get your voltage level translation with some very simple parts. So just a couple of resistors and an MPN transistor. I did actually make a mistake here. I've accidentally put a 100K resistor on the data line, but actually I don't think that'll be a problem for this application. Then if we have a look at the top of the circuit, what we've got is the voltage regulators. So we've got a DC to DC converter based on an LM2671. So these are really nice little switch mode regulators. They don't need a lot of parts and they're also uh, quite robust. So they're not too fussy about PCB layout. And what this means is the supply to the board can be anywhere between sort of nine volts and 28 volts. And then we've got our regulated five volt output for our displays. And then it goes through an MCP1703 for the microcontroller to give us our 3.3 volt rail. Then there's not really that much else. So we've got our in-circuit programming header just on the left here. And then we've got our Sensorion humidity and temperature sensor, which has an I squared C interface. So we've got a couple of pull-ups up here. And we're feeding it a nice filtered DC so that we don't get too much noise uh, being inferred by our digital logic on the PCB. All right, so let's start putting solder paste with the Metcal solder dispenser.
Then we can place the parts on the board. So we'll do these tactile switches. And just always have your tweezers ready just in case you need to give the components a little shuffle. And we're actually using lead free today so it might need a little bit more heat to get the pads to flow. Especially on these where there's quite a big ground plane sinking away the heat from the board. This one's also got quite a lot of thermal heat sinking there, so this may need a bit more time as well. Right, so I'm just preparing these pressure and humidity sensors for placement. What I've had to do is put some capped on tape over them and then just cut them out and that stops any flux or anything entering the orifice. So now that those are taped up, we can start placing them on the board. So first of all, let's put some solder down on the pads. And to reflow the component onto the board, we're going to try using this Relife Flux. I included this in my Flux Paste comparison, and a lot of people have had good results with this, so we're going to give this one a little shot. All right, and there we go. So we could now just remove the tape after cleaning up the board and then we're done apart from the through hole parts. Right, so now we can try applying power to the board. We've got the display soldered in. Um, so we're ready to go now. Uh, and we'll test the voltages with this must tool multimeter. So I'll cover this in a review shortly. But this is a multimeter with oscilloscope function, so potentially quite handy. Um, it seems to work quite well, actually. The only thing that I've really noticed is it's a little bit slow just because of the graphical user interface. Those displays seem to take a little bit longer to refresh than a standard character display. So I'm just applying 12 volts for now. It, it says 24 volts on the PCB, but actually um, it's designed to work anywhere from about 8 volts upwards. So let's have a look at what the voltages look like. So we'll apply power now, and we're drawing about 9 milliamps, so that looks about right. Let's just check the input here. And so, yeah, about 12 volts. Here we should have about 5 volts, so that's the output from the DC to DC. And there we go, so basically 5 volts there. And then this should be our 3.3 volt regulated, which it is. So that seems to be working okay. I've never tried this particular switch mode power converter before so um, you know that's the first go and that seems to work okay so now what we can do is try programming up the PCB right so now we can attach the programmer to the board it's still powered up then we can go over to MP lab and we can try programming the board Erasing, it's detected the device and programming complete. And if we just turn down the lab lights a little bit, then I think you can see that the activity light's blinking about once a second, so that's every time it's taken a sample from the sensor. And there we go, we've got the temperature and the humidity. And if I put my finger on the back of the board, we start to see the temperature climbing. And the way that this has been designed is that we've got a little island here, which is what has the sensor on it. There's no ground plane in this area, and it will sit at the bottom of the device, so uh, the board's going to go this way up. So hopefully the actual PCB, any heat generated from it, won't affect the sensor itself. And things like the LED driver and the LEDs and the DC to DC and the regulator I've kept all at the top of the board. So really down here there shouldn't be anything really generating that much heat. So that seems to be working quite nicely and if I blow on the board 
Uh, we should see the humidity go up, so I'll just try that. And there we go, so that started climbing and then going back down. And the general idea with this is that it's going to sit in one of these cases. And so it's going to go uh, this way up so that the um, air passes through vertically. And hopefully what the intent is is that this is going to screw into the front through those mounting holes. And then when it's pressed against here, you can just about see it. So it's not too obtrusive, but you can read the temperature and the humidity actually through the case itself, just to give general indication. The idea is that this is actually going to be remote and we, you know, the display is sort of an additional extra, which I quite like the thought of, uh, but it's not required for its application. The idea is if the humidity gets too high, it will turn on the fan in the bathroom, for example, but it could be extended for other purposes. So I'm going to build a few of these up, place them around the house, uh, potentially use it as central heating controller as well but the main function of this board was the humidity control so that uh, if you're having a shower it would automatically turn on the fan in the bathrooms and all interface with the um, home lighting controller board but that seems to work quite well um, it's certainly reading a little bit high I'm not sure it's 28 degrees in here although I have had my fingers and everything I've been holding the board so we're probably picking up some general heat uh, you know, from me handling the board, because it's surprising how much radiated heat you get from your hands and that kind of thing. So uh, there may be a little bit of calibration to do. It's it's already supposed to be calibrated, but um, I suspect there's the possibility of if it's taking too many samples, you can get some self-heating. It might be recommended to reduce the sample rate. It certainly doesn't need sort of one second samples anyway, um, but that's something that I'll have to play with in the future. So there we go, that's a look at some PCBs assembled using JLC PCB's new SMT assembly service. And in terms of the quality, I've got absolutely no complaint. As you saw under the microscope, the parts were placed absolutely perfectly and reflowed really nice. I think the only complaint that I'd have really is that the component availability is a little bit limited. So for example, this Sensirion sensor was available on LCSC, but not available for pick and place. So, you know, I had to order those separately and assemble them this end. But in terms of the quality, I've got absolutely no complaints. The other thing that I um, have mentioned to JLC PCB is that um, the packaging could be potentially better because it was wrapped in pink bubble wrap, which can't generate any ESD, but it's not protecting the PCB from any external ESD strikes. So I've suggested that, if possible, they're assembled into silver bags. In terms of the timelines, these PCBs were manufactured within three days, so these had the immersion gold finish, which added a couple of days to the time to actually make the boards, but the assembly service was all done within one day. So on the timeline, from receiving the boards from the production line, the SMT assembly was all done within a day, shipped out, and in terms of the end-to-end, -end, I placed the order on a Friday, and it arrived the following Friday using DHL. So really quick turnaround. And, you know, I'm quite happy with how these have turned out. So if you've got any prototype PCBs, I would recommend that you take a look at the website and see if the SMT assembly service is suitable for you. It'd certainly be nice where you've got loads and loads of passive parts and that gets a little bit tedious to assemble at home. So, uh, you know, those are the kind of boards where the assembly service really makes sense. So hopefully you found this video useful. And until next time, thanks for watching.